Does anyone have a question? Stuart, it's Brad. Yes, Brad. Does the focus of the breath coming into the hara ever come through the crown chakra? Well, what comes through the crown chakra is the only sound. Crown chakra is your direct link to higher energy in the universe. The home sound comes through. You can breathe into the crown chakra. That will open the crown chakra. But it's also a very powerful exercise. So I don't suggest doing it a lot. You can do it maybe once in a class, maybe right before you go to sleep. But when you breathe, you breathe down. You breathe. You know, your breath goes through the lungs and it goes down into the heart. And the breath, you know, it's, geez, I've been writing about this a lot, you know, I mean, look, the breath is an amazing instrument. I mean, it's life. We take in life every time we inhale. And when you bring life, you bring breath into the chakra below the navel, into the heart chakra, it expands the chakra, but breath alone won't do it. You know, we need to have gratitude to keep the heart open. We need to have the mind focused below the navel to keep the heart open. And if those two functions are working inside us, when we breathe into the heart, the breath brings in life, all of life. It will expand the heart center. When we breathe down below the navel, again, we bring in all of life. That energy is so powerful and so profound, you know, that it will expand and strengthen the chakra. So you don't have to worry about breathing through the hara, you know. Uh, if the kundalini is rising, the hara is going to open. What's going to happen is you are going to become receptacle for the own sound. It will come into you, it'll go into each chakra, it'll nurture every part of your inner being. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome there. Does anyone else have a question they'd like to ask? I mean, these are really basic things that are so important to learn and to do. As I said the other day in meditation, you know, we have to constantly go back to basics. We have to constantly go back to the root, the foundation of this meditation. It's a double breathing exercise. And that will open all other possibilities of doing inner work. But always one comes back to the very core, the very foundation of what this meditation is all about. Stuart? Hi. Hi. So as I do the double breath to the best of my ability here, I'm just starting. And so I, I try to breathe into the hara and then my body, the lower part of my body, including my legs, just tenses fiercely and my hips will move start moving back and forth and then release so i'm guessing this is just part of the process yes, yes. <laughs> a tree blowing in the wind you know i mean look i mean what keeps you from just falling over is keeping your attention in the hara in the third chakra that will keep you from falling over. The rest of it is building inner strength. That so enables you, you to sit perfectly still. You just said third chakra. Uh, I'm not, it's the second chakra, the hara, or is it between them? 
you know, um, this is a big question. I, I've always thought that chakra in the heart was the third chakra. Then I found out from people, no, it's the second chakra. I really don't care. It's that chakra below the navel, whether it's the second chakra or the third chakra is really not my business. I know when my mind and anyone's mind is focused in that chakra, in the hara, right below the navel, you know, we have brought our focus of attention right to the core of our being, where the real foundation is, the strength is, the power is inside a human being. You know, so whether you call it the second chakra or the third chakra or the 29th chakra, uh, I I really don't care. I, I'm not of interest. You know, I'm not a scholar in all of this. I do know when you are focused there, you will be grounded. You will have the strength to activate Kundalini. You will have the strength to receive the nurture, the energy of God, spirit, Shakti. You will have the strength to be able to work out your karma in life. Thank you. So whatever, you know, a rose by any no other name, you know, Willie the Bard, Shakespeare, you know, a rose by any other name, you know, a chakra by any other name is <laughs> just as powerful if it's the chakra below the navel. So I, I mean, none of this has come to me through book study. I mean that. It's come to me through experience. For having worked so long in my life at developing a chakra system that you begin to just literally, it's like osmosis, you dissolve into it, you become the energy of the chakra system. And that chakra below the navel, call it the second, the third, the 19th, or the 27th, uh, that's the power point in a human being. That is the power point. That is where the mind has to stay focused because the mind is the one instrument inside us that is strong enough to open that chakra. Oh. So, and all the rest of it is, you know, theological gobbledygook. It doesn't matter, you know. What matters is we're doing the exercise in a way that it works. Right. Not what things are called. And, um... I always thought the first chakra was the base of the spine, the second one was the sex, and the third one was in the hara, right below the navel. That's what I always thought. But then I found out, no, that's the second one, somebody told me. People are always correcting me, you know. So, <laughs> second, I really don't care. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? I mean, it's like Rudy, you know, he once asked me, I'll never forget this. He said, do you know what kind of meditation you practice? So I said, I have no idea, Rudy. All I know is it works. He said, you do Kundalini yoga. So I said, oh. And then he looked at me with a big smile on his face and said, you know, Stuart, I was teaching this 10 years. And somebody came up to me one day and said, you know what kind of meditation you teach? And he said, I have no idea. He said, it's, you teach Kundalini yoga. <laughs> Crack me up. Kundalini. Great stories about Kundalini. How I first heard the word Kundalini. And, and then Rudy told me after a year of studying with him, I was doing Kundalini yoga. And I said to him, I don't care. I said, I, it works. What do I care what it's called? You know, people are so involved in names and what they call things and all this crap. You know, it's just bullshit, you know. Does it work? That is the big determination. Does it work? 
The only reason I'm sitting here right now doing what I'm doing is because it works. That's it. It's the only reason. If this didn't work, I wouldn't be here. I'd be doing something else. Does anyone else have a question? I would like to curious. And the whole comes back to a simple question. Am I growing? Am I changing? Am I developing? I'm not talking about me. You have to ask that question to yourself. Am I growing? Is this helping me to grow in my life? Is this making it possible for me to attain higher levels of consciousness, for me to be quieter inside, more at peace with myself? The only things that matter, what things are called and theological explanations, and God knows they will argue about these things through eternity. And it simply doesn't matter, you know? What matters is, does it work? And I feel God in my heart. Am I becoming a happier person? Is there more love inside me? Is there more compassion inside me? Mm. Does anyone else have a question they'd like to ask? I mean, it's really a shame. We live in a world where everything has to be defined. And we also live in a world where nobody understands anything, you know? Everybody's trying to figure out what this world is about, and nobody has one iota of understanding about what this world is about. Nobody. And that's really the absurdity of the whole thing because it's all involves around the mind and the mind is trying to figure out what this world is all about. And they haven't, I mean, they haven't succeeded since the beginning of time. And there've been all kinds of philosophies and religions and this and that, and nobody succeeds. They're not supposed to succeed. How do you figure this place out? It's ridiculous. You know, even the thought of trying to figure this out is absurd. The high point of the theater of the absurd, trying to figure this out, experiencing it, opening to it, letting it go deep inside, surrendering inside, becoming a child of God living here without thinking about it, but just being, being. That's the key to all of this. And who's going to understand all of it? Who's going to make sense out of things you can't make sense out of? I mean, who's right in the way they view the world? I, you know, somebody tells me they're right, I walk in the opposite direction. And they know I go in the opposite direction. And so all you're going to do is make my life much more difficult. I tell people that they don't know. They want to grow. They want to learn. How do you know what is infinite in the universe? But you can grow and use that infinite energy to expand consciousness, to grow inside, to develop a system inside that is strong enough to truly live here like a child of God without knowing. Just live. Does anyone else have a question? OK. 
Okay, if there are no more questions, uh, there'll be class, what is today, Tuesday, there'll be class tomorrow. Today's Wednesday, I don't even know anymore, the days of, today's Wednesday, there'll be class tomorrow. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. God bless you all. God bless you for being in my life, for being here. And, and as I say many times, being my teacher, being a force of energy in my life that makes me grow literally every single day. So thank you and bless you all for being, being that. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thanks, Dorothy. Good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, everybody.